I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe, and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. Ahoy, Bishikni. If you've watched my channel before, you know that a lot of what I talk about is whether life is better in Prague, Czechia, or in my home state of California. And I even give advice to Czechs who are thinking of moving to the United States and Americans who are thinking of moving to Czechia. But recently I returned to California for a three week vacation and I realized that I had not been giving you guys the full story. In fact, I'd been leaving out a huge part of the equation of the decision process when figuring out whether to move to the United States, to Czechia, or really to any other country. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, I want to thank my longtime sponsor, italki. Italki is my favorite platform for learning a new language. And in fact, I use italki every week to learn Czech as I prepare to take the Czech citizenship test next year. Now, italki is not one of those apps that teaches you how to say the donkey's broad banana to the dance. Italki is actually a platform where you can meet professional teachers and community tutors, native speakers in the language you're trying to learn. It's super easy to sign up. Simply go to the link I've posted in the description below and you can peruse hundreds of teachers of the language you're trying to learn. You can learn about their specialties, you can watch their videos, and you can see what they charge. Everyone is different. Then you buy some italki credits. Be sure to use my code at checkout. With that code, you'll get $5 off when you purchase $10 of italki credits. You choose the teacher and you choose the time. Here's why I love using italki. Because I get to make friends in the culture of the language I'm trying to learn. All the things I talk about every week on my channel, I get to discuss with actual Czechs. Because I'm not just trying to learn the language, I'm trying to learn more about the culture. And the best way to do that is to speak to a native speaker. There's absolutely no reason to wait. I'll put the link in the description box below and don't forget to use my code when you buy italki credits. When you do, you help me support this channel so I can keep making you more videos. So thank you. When I say that Prague is a fantastic place and totally worth moving to, and it is, I've been leaving one big thing out. Even if you plan to move to a country that has a super low cost of living and is really high on the happiness index, has great food and great weather, the truth is you will still always be a foreigner in that place. So you will never experience that place the way that the locals do. That can be good and that can be bad, but it's really important to consider those things before you take the leap. There are so many of these reasons, so in this video, we're gonna focus on the positive ones and be sure to subscribe and click the bell because next time I'm gonna talk about all the negative parts about being a foreigner. The first is that you will be forced to become an observer instead of a main actor in your day-to-day -day life. Instead of just going through your day-to-day -day actions and trying to get things done, you will spend a large portion of your time observing the world around you. How did the guy next to you order his beer? Did he pay at the beginning or does he pay after? How is that woman disciplining her dog? It's different than how we do it at home. Maybe I should pick up some tips from her. How did that family board the metro? Hmm, they, they waited until everybody got off before they got on. That's a good thing to know. There's a whole new body language to learn, and it's not just so you don't stand out, it's also so you don't get hit by a tram. I personally love this because I'm a natural observer. Believe it or not, I hate being the center of attention. And when I live in a foreign country, I get to watch life as it happens. I don't have to be the main actor. You will be delighted by the most mundane interactions. When you're in your home country and you're delayed by a traffic jam or construction or something prevents you from doing what you wanted to do, it's just an annoyance and you don't really think too deeply about it. But when you're a foreigner, 
little tiny hiccups in life become really interesting and they become stories that you then dine out on, tell all your friends about. Like this one time, Hansa and I were in a Czech pub and we saw these two really drunk dudes get in not one, not two, but three fist fights over the course of the evening. The interesting thing was the bartender didn't even throw them out. He just kind of dusted them off, picked them up off the floor and separated them at the bar. This was so fascinating to us. In America, they would have been kicked out of the bar and maybe even the police would have been called. So we were wondering, are these two friends? Are they regulars? Are they brothers? How often do they fight? The whole bar was engaged in watching Eurovision. Were they fighting because they wanted different countries to win or they liked different singers? At home, it would have just been irritating that a fist fight had broken out and spoiled our evening at the pub, but instead this turned into a story that we think about every time we pass that bar. As a foreigner, I don't compare myself to others nearly as often as I used to compare myself to others in my home country. No one wants to admit to comparing themselves to others or being jealous of someone, but it happens. In Los Angeles, I might bump into an acquaintance from high school and see that they're driving a really fancy car and have very expensive clothes and they tell me they live in, in an expensive neighborhood and I might feel a little jealous, like, hmm, I should have studied harder in school or maybe I should have gotten that better job or worked harder. It's just easier to compare yourself with the peers that you grew up with. But I never feel that way living in a foreign country because I'm basically an alien that like just arrived to this planet. These people have totally different histories than me, totally different experiences. If I see a, a beautiful woman wearing an expensive suit, I'm not jealous, I just think, wow, Czech women are so elegant. I wonder if she was a supermodel in her youth. Or if I see some dude driving a Lamborghini on the cobblestone roads, I think, Man, there's a lot of Russian oligarchs in this town. I wonder how the Czechs feel about that. There's no reason for me to feel envious because again, I'm just an observer, sort of watching this play with strange characters that is unfolding all around me every day. There are a lot of immigrants in the United States and so we tend to lump them all into one category. So in California, you just assume that any Spanish speaking immigrant comes from somewhere in the South and they've come to the United States for economic advancement. We tend to not even differentiate between Mexicans and Guatemalans and Peruvians. We don't take the time to learn their stories or their culture or their backgrounds or even realize that they're actually totally different from each other. Like, oh, you speak Spanish and you're a cleaning lady? Okay, you go in this box right here. And it's such a shame. My parents were actually really welcoming to immigrants and very often at our dinner table, there'd be someone from El Salvador or Iran or France. And so we were exposed at a young age to people from many different cultures, but I think that's probably not the norm for American families. I think Americans tend to stereotype foreigners and aren't interested in learning anything deeper about them. But then when you move to a different country, you become the immigrant and you're not a stereotype. So you're much more fascinated with the other immigrants around you. Why did you move to the Czech Republic? Do you like it? Do you find your local cuisine here? What's it like in your home country? I would say that 50% of my acquaintances in the Czech Republic come from other countries. In fact, when I went to school at Charles University, all but one person in the class was from a country outside Czechia. Now the Czechs, much like the Americans back home, are probably not that interested in foreigners. They probably have the same stereotypes about Ukrainians and Russians and Vietnamese and Americans. But because I get to be the immigrant, I'm opened up to a whole new world of curiosity about the people who have moved here also. My husband and I can't walk through this city without observing something and seeking out the context or the history of that thing. Just last night, we were walking under Nusle Bridge and we both kind of thought about the suicides that have happened from that bridge. And I immediately thought, 
huh, I wonder if this was built during communism. And of course, we pull out our phones and we Google it. So then I found this interview with the architect of New Sleigh Bridge, and it was totally fascinating. New Sleigh Bridge was completed in 1973, and rumor has it they wanted to make sure that Soviet tanks could use it to roll into the city to put down any revolutions if necessary. It was actually tested with the weight of Russian tanks. The bridge, which also supports the metro, was built to hold Swedish metro cars. But at the last minute, the government decided only Russian metro cars would do. And they just happened to be more than twice the weight of the Swedish ones. This caused structural damage to the bridge, which had to be reinforced with steel frames. Hundreds of people have lost their lives jumping from this bridge. The original plan was to put a net under the bridge to catch the people, but the city council decided against it when they realized they didn't have a plan to get the people off the net. This information for me was totally fascinating, and we only learned it because as foreigners, we're constantly curious about the normal things that surround us every day, whereas I don't know that a Czech is walking under New Slave Bridge and wants to learn all about its history. In the same way, in Los Angeles, I'm not looking at the Hollywood sign, like, trying to research more about it. It's just there, and I'm only worried about the guy in front of me who won't pull through the green light. These are all positive things about living as a foreigner in a different country. It doesn't matter if it's the Czech Republic, the United States, or somewhere else. Next time, we're going to talk about some of the negative aspects of always being a foreigner in the country where you live. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when that video goes live. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever lived as a foreigner in another country and what that was like. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!